Hi everyone, my name is Deb Hamilton. I'm the Strategic Services Librarian at Pikes Peak Library District who oversees the Law Collection. Um, my contact information is here on this first slide, so please feel free. You're always welcome to reach out to me through email or um, on the phone. Um, today, what we're going to look at are just some of the general resources that the library has available for paralegal students. Um, and then later on, we'll take a look at some of our databases and things that we have available online. So first I want to talk a little bit about what is available through the website um, for law resources and we'll look at a number of them that you can access from home or any of our library locations. And so just a minute here, we're going to take a look at getting onto the website and where you're going to find all of these. But basically, you're going to go to the main PPLD.org website. You're going to look for research along the top, and then you'll look for the Law and Legal Resources Guide. On that Law and Legal Resources Guide, you're going to find a mix of um, databases and other websites that are available. And so just to kind of give you a preview before we go into the site itself, the three databases that the library subscribes to in this area is first we have legal forms from Gale. So this is going to have both federal and Colorado court forms. It also has, though, a lot of different documents that aren't necessarily uh, legal forms that get filed with the court. So this is a good place to look for sample lease agreements, last will and testament, different kinds of medical directives that people might use when planning their estate, business partnership agreements. Um, so really a wide range of content in this legal forms database. Um, the second one that is listed there is one that's called Legal Information Reference Center. And this primarily contains uh, ebook copies of the NOLO titles. So we'll look at what those are in just a second, but they're a kind of um, secondary source that are really good for lay users. And then the last database that we won't explore in this video, but we'll tackle in another one, is the database Westlaw Next. Um, this particular database, it's only available at our Penrose Library location. Our license is a little bit limited, so three people can be logged in at a time and using it at the same time. It does work through the Wi-Fi, though, so um, you, when you come in, you're welcome to get onto it through one of the computers at Penrose, but you could also log into it using your own um, personal laptop if you wish. In Westlaw, we're going to find case law for all 50 states and federal jurisdictions, statutes and code, again, for all 50 states and federal jurisdictions, um, court rules, and a lot of different kinds of secondary sources as well. Um, other things that you're going to find on the PPLD website, though, will be a collection of websites in the area of law. Um, so a lot of good primary law resources, such as the Colorado Revised Statutes and Colorado Court Rules, um, the Colorado Judicial Branch website, which is a great place to go for forms that you're actually going to be filing with the courts, um, the Colorado General Assembly website, um, if you're looking for pending legislation and things like that. Um, Colorado regulations, which are available through the Secretary of State's website, um, and then a, a number of other federal sites as well that cover primary law issues. And then you're also going to find some secondary sources in there as well. So let's go ahead um, and take a break from the PowerPoint. I just want to show you now some of these things on the website. Um, so when you begin, you're going to go to ppld.org. When you get on this page, you want to look for research. And I would just go ahead and click on it here. Now, all of these guides are organized alphabetically. So we're just going to scroll down now and find the one that's called Law and Legal Resources. And let's go ahead and click in here. Um, when you get on this home page, um, you know, a little bit about the layout. You will find kind of this welcome section that'll sort of explain what is here. Um, and then you're going to find these sub guides that sort of break it down a little bit more. Um, so law and legal forms, this particular guide is going to point you to all of those primary law websites, such as Colorado Revised Statutes or the U.S. Code. 
Um, you will also find links to finding um, court forms online through the Colorado Judicial Branch or U.S. Courts website. Um, we have a guide particularly for people who are representing themselves in court. We do have a lot of self-represented litigants that use the library. This will have information about various self-help agencies in the area that can assist these folks with navigating the courts. Getting legal help is more for people who are looking to hire attorneys, and so there's a number of different attorney directories available there. Understanding the law, this is going to cover more of those secondary source websites. Um, so like WEX, which is a legal encyclopedia from Cornell's Legal Information Institute. Um, there's a few NOLO pages as well that have good secondary source type material. So again, sources that are going to help people to understand the law better. Um, special legal topics will also include a lot of secondary source material, but it's going to be broken up by a specific topic area, such as family law or elder law or landlord tenant law. Um, so you'll, again, you'll find some of those secondary sources housed in there, but you also might find agencies and services that are um, doing work in that specific area. Government is where we're going to find just our basic government websites like City of Colorado Springs, etc. Below are some featured resources. Um, so this is going to be a collection of sources um, that are kind of some of the greatest hits of things that we point out to our patrons when they're here at the library. Um, there are um, information about legal aid organizations at the bottom and like where to go for free law clinics. Um, you'll also see me, here I am over on this side. All my contact information is here again as well. Um, so you can always use this page to get a hold of me. Um, then up at the top though again, we also have these blue boxes here. And so here you'll find information about our reference service policy for law, information about why we have this law collection. And so let's click into that really quickly. Um, so this law collection, asked, actually it used to be housed in the El Paso County Courthouse. Um, and when the courthouse needed to remodel to make more space for courtrooms, the um, El Paso County Bar Association, who originally owned this collection, approached the library about forming a partnership where we would provide the space and we would share the costs of subscriptions for the collection. That relationship lasted for quite a while, um, but at, uh, in 2010, the library took over full ownership and maintenance of the collection. What's unique about this collection is that it's one of four public law libraries in the entire state of Colorado. So we're really lucky that the public library has maintained this resource um, for the residents of our community as well as really the residents of Southern Colorado. So the other places that anyone can go in off of the street to do legal resource research or is going to be um, CU Boulder, their law school, um, allows the public to come in and use their law library um, the Colorado Supreme Court has a law library available in their building that is open to the public. And then the Tenth Circuit um, Court of Appeals up in Denver, they have a law library that is open to the public. So again, we're all kind of clustered in the Front Range region, um, but we're the only one that's really in kind of central or southern Colorado. Next, I want to show you this database tab. And so let's go in here. The first thing I want to show you is the legal forms database um, that we were just talking about. So let me go ahead and get that open. <clears throat> And so, as I mentioned before, this is a great place for finding all kinds of legal documents. Generally, if you're looking for forms that you're going to file at the court, I would recommend going to the Colorado Judicial Branch website first, um, just because there's going to be a lot less to sift through than there is in this particular database. And also, if you're filing the forms with the court, it's best just to get them from the court. Um, and you can access all of those court forms for free through the Colorado Judicial Branch website. But let's go ahead and just take a look at what is in this particular database. And so um, on the top here, you have a search bar, so you can plug in any kind of search you want um, for the type of document that you're looking for. If you're not quite sure the name of the form, though, you can always go into these categories as well, and then you can kind of take a look and see 
um, what what's available. So let's just use power of attorney as an example. And the one thing you're going to notice is there's a lot of stuff in here. So just pulling out power of attorney, I have 94 different forms um, that they're giving to me as options. And so you really need to pay attention when you're in here because, you know, all of these forms do different things. So you want to make sure that you're selecting the right one. Um, the other thing to notice is that um, some of these form numbers here, if they start with a CO, then they're coming from the Colorado collection. So they will be specific then to Colorado um, laws. And so that makes it kind of nice. If you go into one of the results, then you're going to get sort of a description that explains, okay, so what is this particular form? What does it do? Um, that will sort of give you a preview of what it looks like if you don't want to go ahead and just download the document. And then um, this will give you sort of a statutory reference or a law summary here um, just to give you an idea of sort of, um, you know, where in the law um, this form sort of lies or what it deals with. Um, then up here, you can go ahead and download the form itself. Um, Microsoft Word is probably a format you're familiar with. If you've never heard of rich text format, that again is just like a word processing file. It can be opened by Microsoft Word or any other sort of word processing program. Um, so that's just all that is. Occasionally you'll see some of these that are in PDF format as well. Um, so if we go ahead and open up the form, on my computer here the download shows up down there and then I can click open into it. Let's see if I can get it to actually pull up here. There, oh, it's being slow. There we go. Okay, and so now I have this form open and I can actually go in and start editing um, the content of the form. So then that makes it kind of nice. Um, so that's just kind of a sense of how um, that particular database works and what you're going to find in there. Um, you'll also see at the top here there's a legal dictionary available. If you click on the tax forms, it's just going to push you out to the IRS website or um, the Colorado Department of Revenue website. Um, and then you got a few other things down here, including some secondary source material, like these legal life articles that explain in more detail, you know, things like estate planning and stuff like that. So that's legal forms. Let's go back to this database page. The next one is the Legal Information Reference Center. And so in here, what we're mainly going to find are um, ebook copies of these different NOLO books. And you've maybe seen these in the library before. A lot of libraries will carry these to cover just sort of some of the basic legal issues. Um, they're great for a lay audience um, just because they're written in language that most people can understand. Um, but then sort of the drawback to them is they're going to be of a more general nature. And so they're not going to be referencing Colorado statutes or cases or anything like that. Some of them might get into federal statutes if it deals with an, a matter that's really a federal jurisdiction. Um, but a lot of times it's just a great place, though, to kind of get your feet underneath you, get an understanding of sort of the legal issues that are pl in play in a different, you know, a particular area of law, and also good for helping you to understand some of the vocabulary. Um, so they can be really helpful for them when you do go back to read the statutes or you do go into a source that's maybe designed more for attorneys, um, you have that understanding behind you of, well, what do these words mean? What are these terms in play? What are some of the concepts that I'm dealing with? Um, there are some quirks to this database, though. Um, so let me just show you. Um, if you put in a title, and this is one that I know, um, so we're going to look for Divorce Without Court. EBSCO databases, EBSCO is the company that hosts this particular database. They're not really designed for displaying ebooks. They're really more designed for displaying journal articles. So as you can see already in this results list, it's just sort of pulling out random forms and chapters from this particular book. I would have to scroll quite a ways to get to chapter one of this book if I wanted to start at the very beginning. So all I need to do though, if I want to get to chapter one, 
is find, you know, an entry that has come from the source I want. So I can see here in this list here, this one is from Divorce Without Courts, just pointing me to the introduction. Now, if I want to navigate the whole book, I just click on PDF full text. And then I have this little navigation panel over here. Um, so this, you know, gives me the introduction here, but you can see there's quite a few forms ahead of that. If I jump a little bit ahead, and actually I have to jump quite a bit ahead in this one, then I could actually get to chapter one if that is where I wanted to start reading. Um, so you can read the whole book in here. You just have to use this panel on the side to navigate. Um, the other nice thing about this database, though, is you could download sections out of it. You can print out chapters. Um, so you have all that information available to you there. Um, if there's various ways you can get the content out of this database. Okay, as I mentioned, we will talk about Westlaw next in a different video, but here's where you would go to access it. Um, a couple other things that are just over here on this side. We do have a listing of legal aid organizations and legal assistance organizations here. This is going to cover most of the legal assistance providers in um, El Paso and Teller counties. And so you're going to find a whole range of resources here. Um, so that, that could be useful if you meet someone that is needing that kind of help. Um, occasionally, if we have any upcoming programs at the library in the area of law, we'll list them here. And then I've also created some tutorials here. So if you need to go back um, and maybe review what we've talked about in looking at these databases, or you just want a brief overview for how to find Colorado court forms on the Colorado Judicial Branch uh, website, I have a video tutorial for that. I have another one here for searching the Colorado Revised Statutes through the free uh, Lexis site. Um, so that, that could be potentially useful as well. And then we have one on using the Legal Forms database and one at looking at um, Legal Information Reference Center. So there's videos to watch here. There's also print guides. You can kind of see this tiny link below. So there is a PDF if you prefer to just look at the print guide rather than watch a video. Um, so that is kind of in a nutshell what is in the website. So let me hop back into the PowerPoint. Um, the next thing I want to talk a little bit more about are some of the print resources that we have available at the Penrose Library in the Legal Research Collection. So let's talk about those. Um, to get to them in the catalog, there is a limit that you can put on. Um, so after you run your search, we can limit it to a specific shelf location. And so we would limit it just to legal reference materials. So let me show you how that is done now. So back out of the PowerPoint and let's get back online. And I'm gonna go back to our main website. So I'm just gonna click on the logo here a couple of times. Um, to search the catalog, you can use this search box here, um, or you can go here into the catalog. I'm just going to search from here. And so I'm just going to do a really basic search like divorce, okay? And so if you search for divorce in the catalog, you are going to find all different kinds of books. Um, everything from spiritual divorce here as our first um, hit that we have, but also a lot of children's materials as well. And so if we wanna limit this now just to the law materials, we're gonna look here on the left and we're gonna find shelf location. I just need to hit that little arrow to kind of open it up. I don't see legal reference material yet, so let's go ahead and hit view all. Now I get all the different shelf locations and they're in alphabetical order, so just find legal reference material and then hit include after you've checked the box next to it. The page will refresh, and so I've gone from having too many results to look through to now I just have 13 to look through. And so these are all going to be um, things that are on the shelf in the legal uh, reference area. Since they are reference books, that means they don't circulate. You can't check them out. They do need to be used in-house. Um, there are exceptions, though, because every now and again, some of these NOLO guides, we will have circulating copies that we'll check out. And you can kind of see that all listed here in the record. Um, so then you can kind of get a sense of if this is one that you have to use at the library or if this is a one that you could find somewhere else and take it home with you. Um, so that's how you do that limit on the catalog. Now, 
back into the PowerPoint. Let me just kind of talk a little bit lastly now about what sort of things we have in print. <clears throat> um, so we have the Colorado Revised Statutes, which includes the Colorado Court Rules. We also have um, the Colorado Practice Manuals. And um, this is a particularly useful secondary source um, that can help you to identify key cases and statutes. And sometimes we'll give you a list of procedures to follow through on. Um, it can be helpful sometimes in determining the correct form and what to include in the form. Um, so the Colorado Practice Manual is a great, a great resource. Um, we do have some court reporters in print. Um, our digests are a little bit out of date. So the digests are just sort of the index for finding um, cases in the print reporter, but we can supplement that with our Westlaw Next subscription. So the, the reporters that we have, we have for the US Supreme Court, we have the federal reporter, and then our state case coverage is going to be a mixture of the Colorado reporter and the Pacific reporter. The Colorado reporter just pulls out the Colorado specific cases from the Pacific Reporter, so it's kind of a unique source that way. Um, we do have American Jurisprudence in print, um, and so that's just a great legal encyclopedia set. Um, we have American Law Reports in print, Black's Law Dictionary, um, Blue Book, um, and then we have a lot of other secondary sources, some um, continuing legal education materials, um, some other treatises and horn books, a uh, number of books from the West in a nutshell series. Um, so a lot of, a lot of help, helpful things um, so you can better understand the law. Then lastly, uh, before we close out this video, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the additional resources that we have at Pikes Peak Library District, um, if you're not familiar with the library system. And so cards are free of charge. Um, we just need a photo ID and proof of address. Um, even if you don't necessarily live within our taxing district, you, if you're a resident of the state of Colorado, you can still get a library card with us. It might limit you on some of the databases that you can use off-site, but you can always use those on-site and then you can always check out materials with it. Um, card holders are always able to print out a dollar's worth of pages for free each day. Um, printing beyond that dollar allotment is going to be 10 cents a page black and white, 25 cents a page for color. Um, most of our locations have uh, computer labs in them and you can reserve stations up to one week in advance. Uh, we also have laptops that are check out that you can check out for in library use as well. Um, and so that's another way, too, that you can come and use the computers here at the library. Um, a lot of our locations also have study and meeting rooms. So if you are looking for a quiet place to either work on your own or a place that you could do group work, um, please keep us in mind. You can reserve those through our website or just give us a call or stop by a service desk and someone can help you with that. And then at our downtown location, we have um, scanning and faxing and photocopying. Scanning is always going to be free of charge. Um, so you can scan directly into your email. You can scan onto a flash drive. Uh, faxing, though, that is 25 cents a page. And then photocopying, it'll be 10 cents a page black and white and 50 cents a page for color. Um, a few other just kind of general resources, you know, as you are working through your school curriculum and then eventually getting out on the job market, um, we have sort of two databases that could help with that. Job Now can help you with um, writing your resume. There are, um, you can submit your resume for critique. People will give you feedback on it. They do different kinds of interview coaching through that database. Um, so it can be really helpful as you go onto the job market. Help Now, they do have like an online writing center. So if you have a paper that you would like to get feedback on, you can submit it to them and they will get it back to you in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, we also have a number of different training databases. So Learn On Demand is great if you want to learn any of the Microsoft uh, software. So like Microsoft Word or Access or um, PowerPoint, Excel. Um, they have short lessons that can kind of guide you through how to use all the various aspects of the program. And so Learn On Demand is an interactive program, so you actually have to 
do activities during the lesson in order for the video to progress. So that's kind of nice because people need practice usually to learn those programs. We also have lynda.com. There you can also find tutorials for all the Microsoft programs. You can find tutorials though on other types of computer software such as the Adobe Creative Suite or something like that. And they really have tutorials for lots of other things as well. So let's say you want to start up a business or you want to become better at digital photography. Chances are there's a video tutorial in Linda for that. Um, we do offer some computer classes from time to time. We also do one-on-one -on -one appointments, so you can always just schedule to meet with someone from the library to work on a specific issue um, that you're trying to figure out. So please keep all of those things in mind. I am also available too for research appointments. Um, so if you want to learn more about legal research from me or some of the resources we have, or you know, you're just looking for help with getting started on an assignment and where to find things, I can help with all of those. I know sometimes I think students feel like contacting a librarian is cheating, but don't worry, I won't actually do any of the work for you. I will just kind of show you what resources are available, how you can access them, how you can use them, um, just to kind of get your feet underneath you um, so then you can get started. Um, so please contact me with any questions that you have. Again, I would be more than happy to meet with any of you in person um, to go over what's in this presentation or other questions that you may have about legal research or the library resources. So thank you for your time and watching this presentation.